It's time to do another quickie video. I'm going to take you around the garden and show you the type of jobs I do this time of year. It's mid-October in my Zone 5 garden. It's early fall. The leaves are starting to turn color, but most of them are still hanging on the trees. It'll still be a couple of weeks before we see a lot of leaf drop. And I know a lot of people are now inside and they're not thinking about their garden, but there are jobs you should be doing at this time of the year. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So I'm standing beside one of my butterfly bush. And what I do with these is let them bloom early on in the fall. And then I trim them back as soon as the flowers are finished. If they bloom early enough and we have a nice fall, they'll rebloom. And this is their second blooming. That's pretty good. The flowers aren't quite as large as the first one, but they're not bad. And there's lots of buds coming. If we continue to have nice weather, I'll have flowers here for another two to three weeks. Now, if you're in warmer zones, it's also important to cut back the blooms after flowering because this plant can be invasive, particularly in zones like seven to nine. It'll spread a lot from seeds. One way to prevent that is to let the plant flower and then just cut it off. You'll also get side branches and more flowers and just keep pruning them back and you won't have to pull out the seedlings in spring. My frogs are going crazy over here. I think they'll like to visit. Now I don't do a lot of deadheading in the garden, but if I know a plant is invasive and it spreads around too much, I will go around at this time of year and cut those seed heads off. Now talking about seed heads, I also collect a lot of seeds. So let's have a look at some of those. A couple of months ago, I noticed that this jack in the pulpit was making seeds. So to protect it from the animals, I put this organza bag on it. And they work really well. And it's now time to harvest them. That's simple. Just break this off. And I leave them in the bag for now until I can process them. And here's a wasp. He doesn't look very active anymore. It's probably getting the end of his lifespan. And it's cooler at night. But you can see wasps don't sting you unless you go to harm them. There you go. Well, now he likes me so much he doesn't even want to go off. Now I have some jack-in-the-pulpit seeds. What do I do with them? Well, there are three things you could do. The first one is the easiest one. Just take these seeds, pull them off the seed head, and go and spread them around the woods. They will eventually germinate, grow into plants, and eventually flower. But that will take several years before you see that. And some of these seeds will be eaten by animals, others will die off. So if you want a lot of plants, it's better to start them indoors. The second way to do it is to take these, clean them. You have to take the fruit off of here, clean them so you have some nice seeds, and then store them until January, February, and then start them at that time. In fact, you could start these with winter sowing. They would do really well. What erisema do, that's the jack in the pulpit, they germinate in about 30 days. They make one leaf the first year, and then it just stops growing. So above ground, nothing is happening, but below ground, it's making a tuber. Middle of summer, it dies back and goes underground. The next year, another single leaf grows up. And again, it's a little bigger this time, and it makes a bit bigger tuber. And this goes on for a couple years until the plant's large enough to flower. That's the common way of growing erisemas. Now, last year I tried something new and it worked really well. So I got some of these seeds and I started them in the late fall, so October, November time frame. They grew their single leaf and I had them under lights indoors. And then somewhere around March 1st, I took them and put them in the cold cellar. I gave them an artificial winter. So they died back. They thought the year was over. And then a month later, I brought them back into the warmth and got them to re-sprout. So they made another leaf all in the same year. So I basically took two years of growth and shrank them down into one year. And it worked really well. I'll have seedlings that flower much quicker this way. And I made a video to show you how to do that. And this is the thumbnail for it here. A lot of plants are making seeds this time of year. And I've identified a number in the garden where I want to collect seeds. So about every three or four days, I go and make the rounds and look at the plants. And I'm looking at the seed heads and waiting until they really get ripe. These are some very special lilies and I want to collect the seed. The one pod almost looks ready. It's starting to go brown. The others are still green, 
and the weather looks pretty good, so I'm going to leave it. Now, if we were expecting some hard frost coming along, I might harvest them early. I might even harvest half the seeds and leave half on the plant and see which ones do better. But since next week still looks fairly warm, I'm just going to leave it. The longer I can leave it on the plant, the sure I can be that I have mature seed. These castor beans were a great success this year. This one's going to be close to 12 feet tall, and it's made this nice clump of seeds. And I'm just waiting until they're ripe. I don't know what castor bean seeds look like when they're ripe, because I haven't grown this plant for about 15 years. So I went on the internet and found some videos that show you when to harvest them. These pods will actually split open when the seeds are ready. So I'm waiting for that. But this is a tropical plant and it can't take a lot of frost. So I'm going to keep an eye on the temperature. And before we get a hard frost, I will collect at least some of these. And then some of the others I'll leave on here and see if they keep developing after we get a frost. I certainly plan to grow it again next year. Fall is a great time to go around your garden and evaluate plants. So here's a Russian mallow, and it self-seeded itself from its mother plant, which is a few feet away. So this is a great plant, but it's going to be too large for this space. It's already shading some other smaller plants that I want to grow. So I have to move it, and I have a couple options to do this. I could move it in fall, and now is not a bad time to do that. I'd cut it right back, dig out the root, put it somewhere else. This plant is quite easy to transplant. The other option is to wait till spring, and I think that's what I'm going to do. I prefer to move things that are growing in the ground in spring, and they seem to adapt to their new homes better. But I will make a note that I better move this early on, or it's going to take over next year. So go through your garden and evaluate things. If plants are too big, they either need to be reduced in size or moved. If things aren't growing well, move them to some other spot. And fall is a great time to do that evaluation. I showed these two plants in an earlier video, but I think they're worth revisiting now that we're later along in the season. You can see the shrub in the background and a smaller plant that's flowering really well up front. This is a type of Joe pie weed. The problem I have here is a design issue. The Joe pie weed is growing too close to the shrub, or I could say that the shrub is getting too big. A few years ago, these two plants worked really well together, but now they're too close. And what I did earlier this year is I cut a lot of the branches out of the bush at the back so that enough sun would go into my Joe pie weed. And it's responded really well. It's grown better and it's flowering a lot because of this extra light. So now I know that the plant in front needs more light than it's been getting. And I have a couple options here. I can move it completely and let the shrub do its own thing. Or I could cut the shrub way back and make it smaller again. Either of those options work, but as you're going around your garden, have a look at it and understand why things are working or not working. I have to do one or other of these things next year. Right now, I'm still not quite sure what I'm going to do. I think that I'd like the shrub to be a smaller plant and to be a little higher. So this plant in front may in fact have enough room and then I can leave it there. This is the Seven Suns tree and it's a fabulous plant. It produces white flowers in mid-fall and then the calyx of the flowers turn this deep red. And actually the calyx are nicer than the flowers themselves. This is a beautiful plant. And it's also easy to propagate with cuttings, which kind of surprised me. It is a bit on the large size, but if at all possible, add it to your garden. My red bud's looking really good this fall. Nice yellow coloration. It's got a ton of seeds in here, more than any other year. Now I could come along and take all of these off if I don't want more seedlings. Or I just let the seeds hit the ground. Someone will germinate. As long as the seedlings are only about this tall, they're pretty easy to pull out. So I'm not too worried about them. I'll just leave them on the plant. The other thing to keep in mind is that fall is a great time to evaluate your soil. How good is your soil? In my book, Soil Science for Gardeners, I have a whole section on analyzing your own soil. Different DIY tests that you can do at home. And it'll give you a good idea about what kind of soil you have. 
And then the last section in the book goes through a soil remediation plan. It helps you develop a plan for your specific soil and your problems. Plants need good soil. Take care of the soil and you can grow anything you want. Have fun in the garden.